This is the testimony of Leticia Stout's biological daughter, Harley Hunt, who is now 20 years old. Harley was 17 at the time of the murder of 11-year-old Gannon Stout, her stepbrother. This is after lunch. I do not have the morning session, but it should be the only session that we will miss moving forward. So tune in tomorrow morning for live coverage of day 10 of the trial. If you enjoy the trial footage, make sure you hit the like button. We will definitely do more. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this case, Leticia Stock was the last person to see her stepson, 11-year-old Gannon Stock, alive. She reported him as a runaway at January 27th of 2020. After weeks of searching, authorities did find Gannon's remains in Pace, Florida. Leticia made several different reports to authorities as to what happened to Gannon, including kidnapping, a bike accident, and him actually running away. After being ruled a homicide, 13 formal charges were then made against Leticia, including murder in the first degree of a victim under 12 by a person of trust, first degree murder, child abuse resulting in death, tampering with the deceased body, tampering with physical evidence, and eight counts of violence. Here is the testimony of Leticia Stogg's daughter, Harley Hunt, but let us first have a moment of silence for the victim in this case. Thank you. May I be seated? Court will recall 20 CR 1358 People versus Leticia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the court. When we took our break, we were in the midst of the examination of uh, Ms. Hunt. That's where we will resume. Uh, Ms. Brio? Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Ms. Hunt. Good afternoon. All rise for the jury. Please. I kind of want to jump forward a little bit on January 28th, 2020. Uh, but before I do that, I think we left off somewhere around 6 p.m. in the afternoon. Uh, up until that point, had you known where your mother was at? No. And I'm going to fast forward to now 7.21 p.m., uh, where you're texting uh, your mother, uh, someone is here. Do you remember that? Yes. What was going on at the house, and why did you say someone is here? There were detectives at our front door. And did you see them out front, or how did you know they were there? Yeah, I saw them out front. And again, I want to scroll down. Your mom says who, and then you go on. What do you say after that? I don't know, people with badges. I imagine that's how you knew they were detectives, right? Correct. Uh, and did you know the sheriff's office was investigating this, the disappearance of Gannon? Yes. And, and so did you see she responds, front, don't poke, and I think she corrects it if we scroll yes, down and that. says, and you say, okay, Again, and then she I says, I'm scroll open. down, your mom says, how did you take that? Go on. What do you say? Um, don't open. I don't know. Did you open the door for the police? No. I imagine that's and how you knew. I don't want to go through the whole text here, but did they ring the doorbell or knock on the door? Um, they knocked on the door. And did they announce who they were? Um... I don't know. Let's scroll down and see what you say. So now they're knocking. They're leaving, I think. Again, we can just keep scrolling down. She says, WTH, who is that? And how do you respond? I responded saying, I don't know. We can scroll down some more, please. Then you say their car is still here. And then what happens after that? Someone called me, called my phone, um, no caller ID, and left a voicemail. So why are you doing a play-by-play -play of everything that's happening to your mom? Because previously she had told me not to answer the door, so I was just kind of updating her with what happened. And if we can scroll down a little bit further, do you get a voicemail from this call? Yes. It says there I didn't answer, so I take it you didn't answer? Correct. And you say it was a defective. Did you mean to say something else? I meant to say detective. <laughs> you must text like me with your thumbs, maybe? Yes. <laughs> okay. uh, we can keep scrolling down. So they left the voicemail. Do you remember what the voicemail was? Um, I just remember them saying like, hey, Harley, it's a detective. We want to talk to you. Okay. And did you forward that voicemail onto your mother? I did, yes. If we can scroll down so we can see that. Keep going down, please. All right, so we stop it here at January 28th at 7.32 p.m. Is that the voicemail that was left on your phone that you sent to your mother? Yes. All right. 
you know, we can scroll down to the next one. She says, what, why do they want to bombard you? You know what she meant by that or what that is referenced to? Um, yeah, I guess like, why are they showing up trying to ask questions? We can continue to scroll down, please. What do you say in response to that? I said, I don't know. How did they get my number? How long were they out there? Do you remember? The police? Um, they were out there for a little while. It wasn't like a quick, like, here and go. Okay. And so at 7.37 p.m., uh, do you remember calling your mother and having a conversation with her? Yes. And do you remember how, about how long that conversation was? No. All right. Uh, if the records indicate it was 10 minutes and 15 seconds, would that be about accurate? Yes. So what did you guys talk about? Do you remember? Um, I remember she just said, like, don't open the door. Like, you're a minor. They can't talk to you because you're a minor. And did you follow what your mom was saying? Yes. Uh, did you keep an eye on them? Were you looking out the windows to see if they were still out there during this time period? Yes. <clears throat> and did you have... Uh, did you actually try to call your mom back uh, on a couple of occasions during this time period? Probably, yeah. And did she answer? I don't remember. Okay. Do you remember actually having a FaceTime conversation with her at 9.55 p.m. on January 28th? No. Um, does that sound like something you might do if the police are outside and you're wanting to figure out what to do? Yes. Okay. And so... What did you eventually do about 10 o'clock p.m. that night? Yeah, so, um, sorry, now that I'm reading the messages, it's refreshing me, but she had called me um, and told me to leave the house. Um, she tried to get me to leave Lena there, and I told her I didn't want to, and I feel comfortable doing that, so she told me to bring Lena to um, one of her friends' house. And that if I left and the detectives were there, to not tell them where I was going. So I take it it was just you and Lena in the house when the police were outside? Correct, yes. And the police get there at 721 p.m., is that right, based on the text messaging? Yes. And at 10 o'clock, are they still there when you try to leave with Lena? Yes. Tell the jury about that. What happens? So I open the garage and they just came out from the side, right from the garage. And they were like, hey, Harley, like, where are you going? And um, my mom told me to say I was going to like Starbucks or something. Um, so just listen to what she said and told them that. Uh, did you cooperate with them? Um, yes, they asked me questions and I answered it. And then um, I feel like they kept asking me more questions and I was just like, I don't, I don't wanna talk. And why didn't you want to talk? Because at this point, I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Everything's just so, like, up and down. Just, I'm just so confused. If we can fast forward to 10.03 p.m. in the text stream. Like, just maybe go up a little bit. All right, that's good. So... Are you there in your book or do you need to look at the TV to see where we're at? Yes, I'm here. So January 28th at 10.02.50, I think it's six seconds maybe. Um, you say, as soon as I opened the garage, they stopped eating. Is that what you're talking about? That they were out there when you opened the garage door? Yes. And so does that help kind of refresh? They were out there from 7.21 until 10 p.m. at night? Yes. When you were leaving with Lena, did you know the police were outside? No. Did you think they had already left? Yes. If we can scroll down now, please. You say they were hiding out. You remember that? Yes. Okay, we can keep scrolling down. And your mom says, wow. Remember that? Yes. 
And then you go on and say, yeah, and then we can scroll down, please. Why did you say, but I think I'm allowed to leave? Um, I just didn't want to do anything wrong. So I didn't know if we were allowed to leave the house or not. So. You know, we can, your mom says, why wouldn't you be allowed to leave? Do you remember that? Yes. We can scroll down, please. You say IDK. I don't know, right? Yes. Your mom says, I want my dogs and you. Remember that? Yes. You know what she was talking about there? Just that she wanted, like, the dogs in me. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Kind of speaks for itself. Yeah. All right. And just have a second. We're going to scroll down. <clears throat> Do you remember telling your mom during this text spring, string, excuse me, that uh, I told them I'm not going anywhere or saying anything? Yes. And why did you tell your mom that? Because that's what she told me to say. Okay. You can go down just a little bit. Keep going. Do you remember telling your mom during this text spring, string, excuse me, that uh, I told them I'm not going please. anywhere or saying anything? You can find them where I just read from. The yes. Yeah, I'll find it here. <coughs> okay, there it is. So at January 28th at 10.04 p.m., this is you telling your mom, I told them, I'm not going anywhere or saying anything. And you said no. Saying that? Yes. You remember how your mom responded? You can scroll down. She said, just keep saying that. And what did she say after that? Tell me what that guy says. Do you know who she was referring to when she said that? Um, the guy at the door. If we can scroll down, please. Uh, one more, please. Now at 10.05 p.m., your mom asked you, has any other family asked where I was? As like our that? Yes. Give you any context on any of the phone calls earlier about what this is about? No, I just assumed she meant like if she was okay. And she'd been missing essentially since about what, 345 that afternoon? Yes. Okay, we can scroll down, please. We can keep going down to going. As we're scrolling through this, was the were you still giving her a play by play as to what the police were doing in the house and things like that? Yes. At on January twenty eighth at ten oh seven PM, do you remember your mom saying I have to get an attorney fast? Yes. And do you know what that was based on? She kept saying that they're setting her up. Was that a continuing theme? Yes. Really, all the way till you go back to Myrtle Beach? Yes. And do you recall telling your mom that they're just taking pictures during this text spring stream? Yes. And how did your mom respond to that? Do you see that? She asked of what? Were they taking pictures? Yes, of the house. And did you tell your mom what they were taking pictures of? Yes. Okay. If we can scroll down to 1011, please.
we can go down one more. All right, right there. Uh, well, let's go back up. I'm sorry. My computer is out. So. so this is where she says, what are they taking pictures of? You say the entire house. Yes. All that. Yes. And then if we scroll down, um, you don't hear from her until 10, 11 again, where she says, what's Landon been doing? Yes. Have you seen Landon up until this point? No, I put she's not here. And then she asked you who's there at 10, 11 um, that night. Do you remember that? Yes. And how did you respond to that? So just me. Now, was Lena still in the house at this point? No. What happened to Lena? Um, the detective struck her. Do you know where she went? Um, to Albert. We can scroll down, please. She says she's been set up at 10, 11, and 31 seconds. Do you remember that? Yes. And then she says, just, so just you and, is that supposed to be Albert? Yes. How did you respond to that? I said, no, it's just me. Okay. Did she ever tell you what to say to the police officers when they were there? Do you remember? Yes. What did she tell you? She just kept saying, like, don't say anything, like you're a minor and they shouldn't be asking you questions. Did she ever ask you to call 911 if you need to? I don't remember. Okay. We can scroll down a little bit, please. You see that in there yet? Yes. Miss Hunt? What exactly is said there, and what time is it? Um, she kept asking, why are there detectives there with you, an underage minor? I was at 10, 12, and I said, I don't know, but I'm asking if I can leave. And she said, tell them you're uncomfortable with these men at okay. 10, 13. Can we go ahead and scroll down to 10, 13? And did you ever tell them that? I just said, I don't feel comfortable asking, like answering questions. Did they stop asking you questions? Yes. And was there a female officer there? Yes. You remember having conversations with her not related to this in the kitchen? Yes. That kind of thing. Okay. If we can scroll down, please. Now at 10, 13, 56, your mother says, if you need... If, if not, you need to call 911 and tell them they are making you stay there. Remember that? Yes. Did you ever call 911? No. Why didn't you call 911? Because it didn't seem needed. Cops are already there, right? Right. I want to fast forward to um, 10. 23 p.m. Do you remember having a FaceTime conversation with your mom? Yes. We can we can blank that out if you like, Grace. And how long was that conversation? I don't know how long it was, but I know generally what was said. What was said? She told me to go meet her at one of the hotels and to uh, just like be careful leaving. What was that all about? You know, what, why did she tell you to meet her at one of the hotels? Um, we were going to stay there that night. Is this the first time the entire day where she told you where she's going to be? Yes. And so what did you do after having this FaceTime conversation with your mom? I listened to what she said and then I went to where she was. And did you go by yourself? Yes. Did you take the Jetta? Yes. Um, while you're driving to go wherever you're going, did you attempt to call her a few times? Yes. And did she answer? No. Where was this hotel you were going to, and 
how close was it to where you work? It was right next to where I worked at. So close to the massage envy? Yes. Off of Powers? Yes. Did she say why you're staying in a hotel room that night? She said that she didn't want to be in the house with Albert and Landon and his family. Why did she need you to leave the house? Did she tell you? She didn't want me there with them. Okay. And so did you pack a bag? I assume so. Okay. Yeah. So tell us about it. Why were you trying to call your mom on the way to go to this hotel? Because I wanted to make sure that she was there. Just because we hadn't spoken really after that. And then um, I remember I got there and I was waiting for a while because I didn't know where she was. And when you say there, where are you talking about? Um, the hotel. What, do you remember what hotel it was? It's probably like a Marriott or Hilton or IHG or something. Several hotels in that area? Yeah. Did you eventually see your mom at this hotel? Yes. You remember about how long it took her to get there and what time it was, that kind of thing? It was, it was quite a while. Um, I remember waiting for a long time. Um, was it in the morning hours in the 29th or was it still the 28th? I don't know. It was late though. It seemed like you were sitting in your car a long time in a parking lot waiting for her? Yes. Okay. Oh. What vehicle was she driving when she eventually showed up? Her um, Volkswagen. The Tiguan? Yes. When's the last time you saw that Tiguan? It was that night. How about prior to that night? When would, Did you see it on the 28th at all? Um... I saw it prior. I don't know the exact date, though. Do you know what happened to the rental car? No. So you just go to this hotel. Your mom shows up in the Tiguan. When she left that day, was she in the rental car? Do you know? I don't know. Um, I just know that when I met her at the hotel, she was in her Tiguan. So what happens when she eventually shows up at the hotel in her Tiguan? So she shows up, and she's like, um... We just need to go home. She leaves her car there, and then we drive back to the house in my car. Did she tell you why she's leaving her car at the hotel? No, she was just like, we can ride together. Did you ever get out of your car to go to her car and look and see if there's anything in it, that kind of thing? No. Did you ever get close enough to her car to smell anything? No. Did you ever ask her, what are you doing, Mom? Why are you leaving your car here if we're going to go home? No. She just kept saying, like, she was just kept being, like, paranoid, I guess you can say. Did she tell you why she was being paranoid? Um, there was a couple of different stories, yeah. Um, I was told that they brought Albert and her in different rooms and tried to say, like, the other person did this to see how they would react. And that's why she felt like she was being set up. Do you even know if she ever went to the police station to be interviewed no. at this point? You know, the next day is when she went to the police station to be interviewed. If you don't know it, that's fine. I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> at least she's telling you that her and I are at the police station. They separate us and they're trying to play each other against us. Is that what she's saying? Yes. Did you guys go straight home from there? Yes. If the phone records indicate um, that you were still face trying to FaceTime with your mom at 1126 and 1131 p.m. on the 28th, would that mean that you hadn't seen your mom yet? Yes. And so what happens when you get home? Um, I remember going home, I stay in my bedroom, yeah. Who was there when you got home, do you know? Um, 
pretty sure Albert and his family, nobody was there. Was Landon there? Yes, I think. I'm not sure. And if you looked at your text messages, uh, People's Exhibit 705 that's in front of you, uh, do you see a string of text messages uh, on January 29th, 2000 from 1, uh, 1.36 a.m. to about 1.40 a.m. in there? Yes. Uh, is your mom in the house when these text messages are going on? Yes. She upstairs and you're downstairs or what's what's going on? Yeah, she's upstairs and I'm downstairs. And what is she asking you about? Um, I guess they had the police had like gone through her clothes and everything and there was stuff everywhere. And asking me if my room was the same way. Do you see in people's exhibit 705 whether or not she asked you what the downstairs looks like? Yes. Am I saying 705? I meant to say 205. It said 705. I apologize, Your Honor. It's Exhibit 205. Does this text messaging back and forth go on for uh, an hour or so that morning? Yes, while we were at home. Does it end roughly around 2 in the morning? Yes. So I'm assuming you eventually went to sleep, right? Yes. Uh, do you remember about what time you got up? Mm. Around eight. Okay. Did you have to work that day? Yes. What time did you have to be at work? Um, 8.30. So January 29th, 2020, uh, you have to go to work. Did you take anyone with you when you left to go to work from the house? Yes, I took my mom with me. And why did you take your mom with you? Because she said that she was going to pick up her car since it was right by where I worked. Okay. Did you ever ask again, why'd we leave it there anyway? No. Did you make any stops on the way to go pick up the Tiguan? No. You didn't go to the airport that day? Oh, yes, we did. Sorry. Okay, tell us about that. What happened? Why'd you go to the airport? What, what happened? I remember we were driving there and she told me, don't speed. I think someone's following us. And she had to turn in the, kit, um, the keys for the rental car. Did she tell you where the rental car was at? No, I think it was at the airport. So did she tell you why she kept the keys that the rental car was already at the airport? No. So can you describe to the jury what you remember seeing your mom do and how she returned these keys? I don't remember. I just remember being in the car when she returned them. Did she go inside the airport? I don't remember if she went in or left the keys in the car. Well, did you see the rental car when you went to the airport? If she left the keys in them, then yes. Okay. Well, how long were you there? Was this something that happened very quickly or did it take some time? Yes, it was quick. You didn't see her talk to anyone from Avis or did you? No. So what happens after she gets done with the keys? Um, we drive to my work. Did she get back in your car then? Yes. Did you park your car anywhere or are you still just kind of in the drive through at the airport of theirs? Yeah, I was just sitting there waiting. And so what'd you talk about as you're going to take her to your car or her car, excuse me? Um, she just told me not to speed because somebody was following us and when we got to my work, she sat in my car for a little while and I went inside to work. How close was it to the hotel where the Tiguan was at, your your work? 
It was close, across the street. Did she tell you what her game plan was? I mean, as she sat in your car? No, um, she just said that she needed a minute and she sat in the car and then she came inside to give me my keys and left. Did you see her looking around the parking lot or looking to see anything? No. Earlier you alluded to that she kept telling you not to speed. Did you say that she thought she was being followed or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did she tell you who she thought was following her? The police. Do you know where she was going after she got the T1? No. What time were you supposed to get off of work that day? Do you remember? I was supposed to get off later than I did, I'm pretty sure. Did something cause you to leave work early? Yes, she, I got a call that she was at the hospital. Do you remember who called you? I think one of her sisters. So what did you do when you got a call from one of her sisters saying that your mom was at the hospital? I asked if I could leave to go pick her up. And did you do that? Yes. Did you pick anyone else up or ask anyone to go with you to pick up your mom? Yes, eventually I did. And who was that? Do you remember? Janine. Uh, is that Janine Sanchez? Yes. And is that someone you worked with? Yes. Uh, is that someone who was a friend of yours back then? Yes. Okay. Why'd you ask her to go with you? I remember I tried to go there at first and they wouldn't let me go in because I was a minor. And then... I remember just before that day, she was like, if you need me or anything, I'll come with you for anything that you need, so. So where did you try to go first and they wouldn't let you in because you're a minor? Right. Where, where was that? The where, hospital. Let's see, do you remember what hospital it was? No. Was it one close to downtown here? Yes. Memorial Hospital sound familiar? Yes. <laughs> so, you went to the hospital, then did you have to go somewhere to pick Janine up? Yes. Where did you go to pick her up? I believe I picked her up at her house. Okay. Did you go back to the hospital after you picked up Janine? Yes. And what happened when you got back to the hospital? Um, we picked her up from a Taco Bell. How did that happen? How, how did you get from the hospital to Taco Bell? I got a call. Um, she said she was riding with some random person and to pick her up at the Taco Bell by the hospital. Who called you and who said that? My mom. And so uh, did you ask her why? Why we're going to a Taco Bell? I thought you were at the hospital type thing. Right. Um, pretty sure I was told like they didn't want her to leave at first, so. And how did you respond to her when she said, I got a ride with some stranger to the Taco Bell? It was weird. I was like, be careful. Okay. So did you and Janine then go to this Taco Bell? Yes. And was the Taco Bell here in the downtown area? Yes. Are you familiar with Platt and Wasatch? I know Platt. Okay. <laughs> was the Taco Bell close to Platt? Yeah. Close to downtown? Mm -hmm. Yes. And so what happens when you get to the Taco Bell? Um, I'm driving. Janine is in the passenger seat and my mom's in the back seat. Does your mom say anything to you as to what's going on and why you picked her up at the Taco Bell versus the hospital? Yeah, she was just rambling a bunch of things. Do you remember what those things were? No, it was just, I remember being like just a lot. Just a bunch of random stuff. Did she have her phone with her? No. Uh, did she ask to use anyone's phone? Yes. Who, whose phone did she ask to use? She had my phone. Uh, and how long did she have your phone after that point? At least until we got home. Did she tell you that the police had taken her phone? Yes. If I may approach the witness, Your Honor. You may. I'm going to hand you people's exhibit 206. Have you had a chance to look at that last night? 
Yes. You know what people's exhibit 206 is? Yes. What is it? Yes, it's a uh, messages between my phone and Albert's phone. And does it cover this time frame that we're talking about here um, after you pick up your mom from the Taco Bell? Yes. In particular, January 27th, 2020 at 7 16 p.m. to January 30th, 30th, 2020 at 10 41 a.m. Right? Is that when it starts and ends? Yes. And do you recognize those messages? Some of them. Do you recognize the ones up until the point you picked up your mom at the Taco Bell? Yes. And do you see the ones that were used after you picked up your mom from the Taco Bell that went to Al Albert, Al Stout? Yes. Uh, are those messages that your mom used while she had your phone? Yes. Overruled. And do they actually reflect your messages and what your mom was doing when she had your phone uh, on those dates. Yes. Move to admit People's Exhibit 206. Mr. Tolini. I object on foundation. I think sufficient foundation has been laid. She's stated that she's familiar with her phone number. She's familiar with who she gave the phone to. I think it goes to weight, not admissibility. The objection's overruled. In addition, Your Honor, this exhibit was shown to Albert Stauk and he authenticated his uh, messages on there. He did. Thank yes. you. Go ahead. So, where did you go after you left the Taco Bell with your mother and Janine Sanchez? To Janine's house. Did you make any stops or did you go anywhere before you went to Janine's house? I remember getting the dogs at some point. Do you ever remember you going to a parking garage? Shown to Albert Stauk and he asked yes. Him, okay, what was that all about and who told you to go to a parking garage? Yes. My mom told me and so she was looking to see if her car was still there. After you left the Taco Bell? Do you know where this parking garage was at? To Somewhere downtown. House. And describe to the jury what you did as you went to this parking garage. We just drove around um, and she was just seeing her, her car was still there. And we left. Do you ever remember going? What did she tell you happened to her car and why was she yes. looking if she told you that? Um, I think she was worried that the police took her car. When you picked her up at Taco Bell, did you ask her where her car was? I think she had mentioned it to me that it was there. Okay. At the parking garage? Yes. Was, your, was it your understanding what this parking garage was associated with? Just, I thought it was associated with the hospital. Okay. Was it close to the hospital though? I don't remember. Okay. Did you find the car in this parking garage? I think so. I don't remember. Did you see some deputy sheriffs in the parking garage around the car when you drove by it? remember okay all right so then you said you go uh, to janine's house why did you go to janine's house um i was did just told that we couldn't stay at our house garage? and i think so i don't remember what was did you see were, some were you planning on staying there prior to picking up the car mom? when you drove by it yes um remember her telling me like because i remember talking to her in conversation okay. saying like i don't know if we can stay at our house so then um, you said you and she go, was like, well, uh, if Janine's you ever need house. to stay with me, then you, you can. Um, and so prior to picking up your mom, you already made arrangements to stay, stay at Janine Sanchez's house tonight? Yes. And how about your mom? So. Was a plan for her to stay there as well? What was your you um, you um, I don't remember. Yes. Um, well, did she stay there? Yes. Do like, um, you remember her text messaging Janine while you're in the car? Yes. Then you can. How do you know that? From these messages. And so that's not you texting Janine. What does the text message say? These aren't between me and Janine. Well, do you remember your mom texting Janine? Is it okay if I stay here or words to that effect? Yes. And did she eventually stay at Janine Sanchez's house with you? Yes. Uh, were you there the entire night once you got there after the Taco Bell? Yes. I'm going to flash uh, forward to January 30th of 2000. 
Um, do you remember? Well, I'll ask you, did you text massage MD saying you're going to resign? Yes, I remember. Um, my mom wrote the email for me. Was it an email or a text? Do you remember? A text message. And if the records indicate that was at 4 30 AM, would that sound accurate? Yes, I don't remember being up that late, but. Did you text that or did your mom text that? Do you know? I don't remember. Okay. So what happens when you get up? What, what do you do the next day on that January 30th? Mm, I remember getting up, we took the dogs out and I think we, that's the day that we drove to like Marshall's. Now, as you're driving to Marshall's, uh, was who was in the car? Me and my mom. Did your mom ever say anything about the police following you at that point? No. Uh, did she say anything about go the speed limit, don't break the law, that kind of thing? No. Did you know that the police were following you? Eventually. We're going to talk about what happens at the marshals. But okay. Up until the point that happens, did you know that they were following you on the road? In other words, any discussion, hey, there's a car behind us, and that car's been behind us for a while. No. Was your mom ever looking around to see if anyone was following? No. Nothing unusual about that trip then? No. So tell us what happens when you get to the marshals. Um, we get to the marshals, go inside to get, like, clothes or whatever we're looking for. And then I'm at the cash register, and that's when, like, the police come in. What did the police do when they came in? They took my phone and as we were walking out, they put me in handcuffs. How did that make you feel? Bad. Was your mom in the store with you when this happened? No. Did your, what, what was your mom doing when all this was happening? Do you remember? She walked outside. Did she go out before or after you? Before. And did you see her when you came out? Yes. What was going on with her? She was also with the police. Was she in handcuffs as well? Yes. Did she say anything to you that you remember? Yes. What did she say? To not say anything. And how did she say that? She was yelling it. Pretty hysterical at that point? Yes. Was she screaming other things? Yeah, I remember her saying other stuff. Um, she was just like... That's my daughter. Don't do anything, stuff like that. How long did all this take place? 20, 25 minutes. I said, seemed like a long time. For yeah. Um, did they eventually take the handcuffs off and let you go? Yes. Uh, same thing with your mother? Yes. Did they take your car and your phone? Yes. Would you recognize your phone if you saw it again? Yes. <laughs> Probably wondering what I got in my hand here, huh? Uh, if I may approach you on her. Yeah. Uh, we're going to hand you what's been marked as. Particular exhibit 203, okay? Yeah. In 203, it's pretty obvious that there's a cell phone in plastic there. Do you recognize that cell phone? Yes. <laughs> you take it out and look at it. Can you... and... Whose cell phone is that? This is mine. And is it in the same general condition as was when the police took it from you on January 30th, 2020 at the Marshals? Yes. Move to admit People's Exhibit 203. Mr. Jackson. Exhibit 203 will be admitted. So what was the game plan after they took your car and your phone? What were you and your mom going to do? Yeah, we were supposed to meet my family. Um, and at that point, we didn't have a phone to contact them to let them know where we were. So we walked down to a store that was in that plaza to use the phone to call them. Now, prior to all this happening at Marshall's, did you know that you had family members flying in? Yes. And did you know what family members were coming? Yes. And what family members were coming? It was my grandma, my uncle, and my aunt. And what are their names? Deborah, Dakota, and Brenda. 
is it Deborah Locklear? Yes. And who's Deborah Locklear? My grandma. And Dakota Lowry? Yes. Who's Dakota Lowry? My uncle. And Brenda, is it pronounced awkward? Acquired. Um, what is it? Acquired. Okay, acquired. Yep. I'm sorry. And who is Brenda Acquired? My aunt. Okay. And so did they eventually come and pick you up there? Yes. Uh, where did you go after you were picked up at the Marshalls? We went to the hotel we were staying in. And do you remember the name of that hotel? It was an extended stay. Was it extended stay America? Yes. And you probably don't know the address, but was it up north area? Yes. Uh, does 5855 Corporate Drive ring a bell at all? No, I didn't know the address. Okay. Um, so what did you do when you got to the extended stay? We got there, we were talking with my family, and then after then we went to Walmart. And why did you go to Walmart? They were just saying like, you guys need to get some clothes because we didn't have any at that point. I'm assuming you got some clothes at Walmart? Yes. Uh, then you did, where'd you go from there? Back to the hotel. You guys remember where you ate that night? No. So once you get back to the hotel, uh, do you remember how many rooms you had? Two. Who was staying in which room? Um, it was back and forth. So I'm pretty sure my grandma and my aunt stayed in one room and then it was me, my mom and my uncle. So you and your mom in Dakota? Yes. Uh, did you guys talk about what you were going to do the next day or what the plan was? Um, your family's out here. You got two hotel rooms. What was the plan for the next day? Do you know? Yeah, so they were just there, um, like supporting us, of course, because of everything that happened. And the next day we were supposed to go and get our belongings from the house. And how are you going to go about getting that? They rented a van. And who is they? Um, my aunt. What kind of car did they have or did they have a car? I'm assuming when they picked you up at the Marshalls the day before. Yes, it was a sedan. Do you remember what kind of make and model it was? Um, Nissan. Sorry? Uh, Nissan. Ultima, does that sound familiar? Yes. And so did you go the next morning to get a van? Um, yes, we all went to get the van. And who rented this van? My aunt. Would that be Brenda? Brenda, yes. Okay. Uh, and so where did you go after you rented the van or after Brenda rented the van? Um, after we got the van, that's when we went to the house. Did you take the Nissan Altima as well? Yes. Do you remember who was driving which vehicle? No. Do you remember what vehicle you were in? I'm pretty sure I was in the car. Okay. Do you remember who was driving the car that you were in? I, no, I don't know. It's okay. If you don't remember, that's fine. So what happens when you get to 6627 Mandon Drive? There are police there. Um, and we went in to go get our stuff. Um, Albert's family was there. He was there. Just like everyone was there. Um, and as we got our stuff, the police had to look through everything that we brought. What kind of stuff were you getting? Um, mainly just like clothes. Did you go to your room to get your clothes or did that, what items did you get out? Do you remember? Yes, I went to my room to get my clothes. Were there suitcases? Um, yeah, we were filling like um, Tupperware bins or suitcases or like bags or kind of anything. Uh, do you remember seeing a big, large, olive green suitcase that had wheels? And did you remember seeing that when you're moving things out of the house that day? No. Do you know what suitcase I'm talking about? Yes. Uh, and who did that suitcase belong to? Do you remember? Albert. And is it a suitcase that you saw in the past when you're moving from Alaska and things like that? Yes. Were the police checking every suitcase that came out of that house? Yes, they were checking anything we took out. 
Um, if there was any books, they had to go through the pages. We couldn't really take any technology. And so how much, how long did this take to get things out of the house and put in the van? They were trying to do it quick, um, maybe like an hour. What happens when you get your things and the van is loaded up? Where do you go from there? We were supposed to drive back to the hotel, um, but as we're leaving, um, my mom saw a reporter and wanted to talk to them. Whose idea was it to talk to the reporter? Do you remember? My mom's. Did anyone try to talk her out of it? Um, yes. Who? I just remember my family saying, like, that's probably not a good idea. Was your mom pretty determined to talk to this reporter? Um, she had got out the car, so I don't remember what she had said to them, but I remember like we had left the area where we were at and went down like a back street at the back of the neighborhood to talk to them. So you went somewhere else so that your mom could do this interview with the reporter? Yes. Uh, you still had the Nissan and you still had the rental van? Yes. So talk about that interview. What were you doing when your mom was being interviewed by, was it KKTV? Yes. What were you doing? I was just waiting in the car. Was there a point in time in the interview where your mom asked you to come out? Yes. Uh, and did you do that? Yes. Uh, did you get on camera and answer questions? Yes. Why did you answer the questions the way you did on KKTV? Because that's how she told me to. Were you doing what your mom told you to do during that time period? Yes. And do you recall what those questions were? Um, I know they asked me my name. I don't remember what they asked me after that. Do you remember talking about the hike at Garden of the Gods and whether or not you saw Ganon after this hike and things like that? Yes. And is that what you're talking about? You're just going along with what your mom wanted you to say? Yeah, when she came to the car, she was like, come on, let's go do this interview. I didn't want to do the interview. Um, and I was like, I don't know what I'm like supposed to say because I was told that we weren't allowed to talk about the fire. So I was like, am I allowed to talk about the fire? So, yeah. And you said you saw him, right? After the hike. Yes. And you did see him as you testified earlier. That's when he was in the bedroom and you got home from work late at night and you didn't know if he was asleep or awake, but yes. you saw him in bed. Yes. Okay. What did you do after this um, interview? Um, we left and went to the hotel. Both cars? Yes. In, in car? Yes. What happens when you get back to the hotel? Um, we get back. Remember my mom saying that she needed to leave because she needed to get dog food. And did she leave? Yes. Do you recall what car she took? The rental car. The Nissan Altima? Yes. And how long was she gone? She was gone a while. Two and a half hours? Yeah, I was a... Overruled. Did it seem like it was that long, two and a half hours? It was a long time, yes. Did she tell you where she was going to this pet store, where, what location it was, and things like that? No. Um, I remember when she came back, I was like, what took so long? And she was like, I didn't use the GPS, um, so I got lost. What was the game plan for the next day when she comes back? Did you know what was going to happen the next day, February 1st? Um, I, that's the day that we left. And so just January 31st is when you go and get the items out of the house, the KKTV interview, you go back to the hotel. She's gone for quite a while, comes back the next morning. What was the game plan? The next morning, um, I remember that we were going to leave and my aunt said that she didn't want to pay for the van while we were gone and, and just like insurance purposes. So we had to go and get a new one. And when you say we, who are you talking about? Um, like they just had to go get a new one. I don't. Do you recall who went and got a new van? Um, I don't remember if I went with them or not. 
did eventually your mom show up in a different van and at the hotel? Yes. And would that be in the morning of February 1st, 2020? Yes. Did you have any idea what was going to happen when she came back with the van, a new van, and on February 1st, 2020? Um, I just knew that we were leaving. I didn't know where we were going. Did you ask your mom where we're going? Yeah, the destination changed multiple times. Tell us about that. Um, we are leaving. I remember she just kept saying, like, where do you want to live? And I'm, I was just confused. And originally it was going to be Texas, and then it was Florida, and then Myrtle Beach. Just kept changing. When your mom came in this new van, did you see what was in the back of the van? No. Did you ask about where our stuff is? Because assuming all your bags and things were in the first van that Brenda, is it acquired? Acquired. 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 I'm struggling with that name. Mm -hmm. uh, they were in there when you moved them. Do you know how they got from one van to another or if they even got transferred? Yes, my mom and my uncle moved them. How do you know that? I just remember that that morning it was cold outside and I was in the hotel and they had moved stuff. And so was this a pretty quick deal? I mean, did your mom literally come back, pick you up, and then you hit the road? Is that what happens? I remember that they were on a time crunch because my family had to get back to their flight in Denver. And so uh, did your family go one direction? And I don't know if it's the same direction, but then you and your mom went somewhere else? Yes. May I approach the witness, Sharon? You may. Handy People's Exhibits 201 and 202. Okay. Do you recognize those exhibits? Yes. What is People's Exhibit 202? It is the back of the van. Is that a picture of the van that your mom rented uh, back on February 1st, 2020, and picked you up from the hotel? Yes. Um, and 202. Four is it two o four? Two o two and two o three. Is that right? One and two o two. Got them not even close. So two o one is a picture of the van. What is two o two? A picture of the back of the van. Is that what the back of the van looked like, as far as you know? Yes. Was there a partition between the driver's seat and the back of the cargo area? What do you mean? Can you see like a metal grate between the cargo area and the driving area of that van? Yes. Is that what that looked like from inside? Yes. Uh, move for the missions of 201 and 202. No objection. Exhibits 201 and 202 will be admitted. Request to publish. You may go ahead. So here we have People's Exhibit 201. Do you see that on the TV screen behind you? Yes. Is that the van then that you uh, drove off to with your mom on February 1st, 2020? Yes. And People's Exhibit 202? We see in people's exhibit 202. It is a picture of the back of the van. Did you ever go back in this back area during I, the entire time you had this van? I did not know. And why not? Because everything that I needed was right by my seat in the front of the van. Want to go back there? Um, I remember like wanting more clothes. So why didn't you go back and get some more clothes? Just because whenever we stopped, it was like quick, like um, whenever we stopped at hotels and stuff. So um, there's no point. Well, did you ever ask your mom, why can't I go back there and get some clothes? No. Did your dogs ever go back there? No. Did you have your dogs with you? I guess I should ask first. Yes, we did. Um, can we go to People's Exhibit 303 that's already been admitted? I'm going to show you a picture uh, that's already in evidence. It's People's Exhibit 303 uh, in just a second. Okay, 303 is up on the TV screen now. 
Do you recognize this photograph? It has a placard 14 with what appears to be a kind of a rubber dog bone. Yes. Do you recognize that dog bone? Yes. And what, how do you recognize that? Um, because we had all like the dog's toys up front and their food and everything. They're playing with it on the drive. Did you leave that in the van after you turned it in? I didn't know until yesterday. How sure are you that that's the dog bone that you had with your dogs in that van? It looks familiar, like, because, like, they're puppies, so we got, like, the little bones, so, yeah. Okay. All right, great. We can take that down. So, what are you talking about as you're leaving in this budget van from the hotel room? Do you, do you ask your mom where you're going, what's the game plan, that kind of thing? Yeah, so I did. Um, that's when she was asking me, like, where do you want to live? Um, and the destination just kept, like, changing. And um, she was just talking about, like, starting a new life. What about Albert and Lena? Did you ever talk about leaving them? Him? No. Um, she just kept saying that you know, Albert went against her and doesn't believe her. So that's why she went to leave. And it's something like that happened in the past where you and your mom left like Albert and the life. kids on the road somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yes. Tell the jury about that. Yeah. Um, there were multiple times that she would just get like angry or frustrated and ask me to like pack up all my clothes and we'd get in the car. One time specifically from Colorado, we drove all the way through Kansas and then she would always like be like, okay, we just need to go home because her and Albert would talk it out and then we'd go home. Did you think that was going to happen on this trip? Yes. Uh, did that happen on this trip? No. At what point did you realize that was not going to happen on this trip? Once we were close to Myrtle Beach. So all the way across country up to Myrtle Beach, you're thinking we're going to go back to Colorado. Everything's going to be fine. They're going to get back together. Yes. Do you remember when this trip to Kansas happened that you end up turning around and going back? It was during the time that we lived in Colorado. I don't know the exact month. No. Sometime during 2019 then? Yes. Do you remember stopping at a uh, Love's truck stop in Pueblo, Colorado to get gas? Yes. Uh, do you remember about what time that was? No. Do you remember stopping at a Walmart in Trinidad on your way in the budget van? Yes. And do you know why you stopped at the Walmart in Trinidad? To get a phone. And did you guys get a phone? Yes. Who went in and got the phone? My mom. Up until this point, as she's driving, was she obeying the laws and stopping at stoplights, stopping at stop signs, that kind of thing as she's driving? Yes. Did she know where she was going? Did she ever tell you, I'm lost, I don't know what we're doing? No. Where did you think you were going as you left the Walmart in Trinidad? Texas. Why Texas? Um, I just remember her saying, like, Texas is a good place to live. Up until this point, did you notice anything unusual in the back of the van? No. Did you smell anything in the back of the van? No. You talked about Gannon and where Gannon might be driving down through Trinidad, Southern Colorado. No, she was on the phone a lot talking to people about everything. What was she talking about? Um, I remember one conversation was about a video that was going to be surfaced. Um, she said I was going to prove her innocence. Um, just going over like everything that happened. Who is your mom concerned about during these phone conversations? She's called sustained. Sustained. I think you can ask her uh, what she said. Sure. During these phone conversations, did you hear your mother talking about? Did I what? I'm sorry. Did you hear your mother talking on the phone to someone on the other side? Yes. Did you hear what she was saying? Yes. 
who was she talking about with regards to what's going on with Gannon being missing and things like that? Her sister. Was she talking about her sister or was she talking to her sister about herself? Talking to her sister about herself. And what were the kind of things she was saying? Um, she just kept saying like she was set up that this video that's going to surface will show that Gan came home. Um, just things along that line. Now, as you're sitting in that van, listening to these conversations, did you ever ask your mom, what are we doing? Why are we leaving? Gannon's missing. Why aren't we out looking for him? That kind of stuff. Um, no, I didn't really question her a lot. Why didn't you question your mom? I would be told that, um, like I'm being like disrespectful or like talking back. And what would happen if you were being disrespectful or talking back to your mom? Sometimes she would like backhand me. Where would she backhand you at? To my face. Is that why you just didn't say anything and you sat in the van and went wherever she was driving? Yes. Overruled. Do you eventually go to Amarillo, Texas? Yes. And do you recall staying the night in Amarillo, Texas? Yes. And do you remember what hotel you stayed at in Amarillo, Texas? No. Um, did you stay at a Candlewood Suites? Sounds familiar, yes. And do you remember watching some videos of you and the dogs walking into Candlewood Suites in Amarillo, Texas? Yes. Okay. You know, we can take a break now and then get into the videos or I can keep going, whatever you prefer. Council approach, please. Mr. Young? Yes, Your Honor, thanks. You know, I believe there's a stipulation to the admission of People's Exhibit 316, 321, 317, 318, 320, and 323. And that's the order we're going to play him. That's why I went out. I was going to say, let's... Uh... <laughs> Let's try that again. All right, we'll go 316 through 318. 316 through 318. 320, 321, and 323. Okay. And um, defense, do you agree? I do. All right, exhibits 316 through 318, 320, 3, uh, 321, and 323 will be admitted. Thank you, Judge. And before we play those, uh, Ms. Hunt, uh, did you hear your mom making these reservations as, as you were driving, particularly the one in Amarillo at the Candlewood Suites? Yes. Remember about how close in time to when you actually checked in that she made these reservations? It was close in time, yeah. And would she make the reservations for one person or two people, two people with two dogs? How would she make that reservation? Um, with For one person. And do we see that in the video that you'll walk through the lobby first with two dogs? She later comes in and goes to the counter and registers? Yes. Uh, with that, we would play People's Exhibit 316. All right. Before we hit play, is that you with the dogs right there that we see in the still image? Yes. Go ahead and hit play, please.
Now the clock in that video looked like it said 7.48 p.m. or 19.48 military. You remember it being about that time when you checked in the hotel? Yes. We can now play People's Exhibit um, 321. Can we? Yeah, we'll just let it play. Now that video stopped at 747. Is that a continuation of you walking through the lobby, going back to the elevators? Yes. That speaks for itself, but is that what happens here? Yes. And where were you going to go? Why, why'd you go to the elevators? Do you know? Um, I just know, like, she didn't want to pay for two dogs staying with us, so we just went in separate. Okay. And was that routine throughout this trip? Would you do that every night you stayed somewhere? Yes. Uh, we can play 317 now. Is that your mom there we see at the counter? Yes. Video stopped and it looked like the time was 7.47 p.m. Did you see that on the counter? Yes. Do you know where you're at as your mom's at the counter? Um, by the elevators. You can go ahead and play uh, People's Exhibit 318. Now, we haven't seen any bags in either your hands. Did, scroll down? did you guys get bags out of the van or change clothes or what was the He said, just keep that? saying that. No, it was always just like a in and out thing when we would stop at hotels. We can go to 320 now. More, please. Now at 10.05 p.m., your mom our family. Okay, 320 now. Played. It looked like it was 7.50 when that stopped. Is that right? Yes. So we can go to 3.23 now. Now at... 5 p.m. Tomorrow. Our family. Okay, 320 now. Played. It looked like it was 750 when that stopped. Is that right? Yes. So we can go to 3 now. Now at... So she got on the same elevator you did? Yes. Do you remember where you met up in that hotel that night? No, I don't know if we knew the room beforehand or how we arranged that. Do you leave the hotel at all to go eat dinner or do anything like that? Do you know? No. How did you eat that night? Do you remember? Um, 
we would order it to the room. Room service, what'd you do? No, Grubhub. During the entire trip, did you ever stop anywhere and eat at a restaurant, a sit down place? No. What kind of places, where would you eat during this trip? Um, places with like a drive through. And would both of you go in to the drive through or would you drive the van to the drive through area? Um, I remember one time me going inside to get our food. Did you ever stay in the van by yourself? Entire trip? Did you ever no. stop anywhere and eat at a restaurant? You know why? Sit down place? No, no. What kind of places, where would you eat during this trip? Do you remember when you checked out of that particular hotel room? The uh, next day. On February 2nd, 2020, do you remember about what time of day it was when you left? Um, around like 9 or 10. Checkouts at like 11, so. Okay. And so when you wake up the next morning, do you have any idea where you're going? No, just back on the road. Was the plan still going to Texas, moving to Texas? I think at that point it was um, we were just going somewhere in Florida. Now, the night you stayed in Amarillo, Texas, did you and your mom sleep in the same bed? Um, I know there were times where we did. I don't remember at which hotel. Were there times where you had your own bed? I don't remember. I remember like one specifically when we did have the same bed. Well, the night of February 1st into February 2nd, did your mom ever leave the room by herself? No, not to my knowledge. February 2nd, um, do you remember driving all the way to Decatur, Texas on that date? Yes. And do you remember staying at uh, Candlewood Suites in Decatur, Texas? Yes. Uh, did your mom do the same thing? Would she call in advance, make a reservation? Would you go in with the dogs first? She comes in later. Yes. As she's making these reservations, do you recall her using any kind of corporate raid or saying that she was with a corporation, things like that? Yes. What would she say? Um, I believe it's called Ford Motors. Where would that come from? Do you know? Um, my aunt. So your mom knew that she can get a cheaper rate by saying Ford, or do you know that? Yes. Uh, based on where your aunt worked? Um, I believe it was her husband. Yeah. Do you remember your mom ever leaving the hotel room when you're in Decatur, Texas on February 2nd, 2020? No. If she would have left the hotel room, would you have known it? When I was awake, yes. Okay. Obviously, if you're asleep, you don't, right? Right. Okay. So February 3rd, 2020, um, do you remember checking out and leaving Decatur, Texas? Yes. Would it be about the same time you left the hotel in Amarillo? Yes. Do you remember driving all the way? Pensacola, Florida. Yes. Long drive, right? Yes. Uh, when you get close to Pensacola, do you remember your mom making the reservations at a hotel room? Yes. And do you remember what hotel room that was? Not the name, no. Was it the Candlewood Suites? Probably. Same process. She's with the Ford Motor Company, corporate discount, one person. Would you walk in first, she walks in later? Yes. You remember that happening? Yes. Um, at this point, I'd like to publish People's Exhibit 181, which is already in evidence.
Okay, so People's Exhibit 181 is up on the TV screen. You see that? Yes. You recognize any signatures on that document? Yes. Whose signature do you recognize? Uh, my mom's. Okay. You remember staying at that King of Suites in Pensacola, Florida on the night of February 4th between early morning hours? Yes. Do you remember checking in after midnight? Yes. Or actually going to bed after midnight? Yes. How many beds did you have in that one? One. And was that a queen size bed? Um, no, I think it was a king. This document says it was a queen size bed. Would that refresh your recollection? Yes. Did you guys eat at the hotel that night or do you remember? I think we ate beforehand, but I don't I don't know. Did you stop on the road somewhere and do one of these drive throughs you were talking about? Yes. Pick up some quick food? Okay. So what happens when you get into this room? Do you remember? Um, we just get in, go to sleep. Now on People's Exhibit 181, it says that the car you're driving is a Nissan Altima. You guys weren't driving a Nissan Altima. Right. You see the Ford Motor Company at the top of the page there. Metal that's more seen here as it's seen yet. Oh, yes. Is that consistent with what you've been talking about, how she would use corporate re reductions to stay in these hotel rooms? Yes. So after midnight on February 4th, 2020, did your mom ever leave that room? Not that I know of, no. Uh, were you asleep in the entire time or were you awake during times that night? And we're talking 12, 30 in the morning on. I was asleep. Earlier, you indicated you're kind of a hard sleeper. Would you know if your mom left that room or not? No. How was your mom acting as you checked into this hotel room? Um, she was acting normal. Up until this point, had you ever gone to the back of that van? Back. No. At any of the stops up to this point, had you gotten any change of clothes or gotten any suitcases out of the back of the van? No. At any point during this trip to Pensacola, did you smell anything in the back of that van? No. Do you know why I'm asking you if you smelled anything in the back of that van? Yes. Why? Because Gannon was back there. How do you know Gannon was back there? Because you guys told me that there was evidence that he was back there. Did you later learn that Gannon's body was found in Pensacola, Florida on yes. March 17th? Yes. 2020. How did you learn that? When they arrested my mom and the FBI like came to the house and told me. So what happens when you wake up the morning hours of February 4th, 2020? What's what's going on in the room? Tell us about when you checked out and things like that. Yeah, it was just like all the other days we just check out. Afterwards, we go grab breakfast and then we go to Orlando. Why are you going to Orlando? She was planning that that's where we could stay. Um, I remember her like calling apartment places to like see if we could live there as, as far as you concern is that where you're going to be living yes at the end of this trip? yes miss son i want to ask you a, a direct question okay okay did you help your mother throw that suitcase over a bridge in pensacola florida no i did not on february 4th 2020 no i did not How was your mother acting like after you left Pensacola? Um, I remember that morning when we went to go get breakfast. That was another time that I went into the restaurant. Like I went into McDonald's to get our food. And she was just like, like, I just remember her like being sad. Um, just like being like down. Did you ask her why she's sad or down? 
Um, yeah, she was just like, because of everything that's going on. When you get to Orlando, do you remember how long it took you to get to Orlando from Pensacola? Um, no. Was it the next day? Yeah. What happens when you get to Orlando? We were supposed to stay there. Um, it was supposed to be like our time that we were going to stay there for a while. I think she booked her hotel for like five or so days. And um, we left early. Why'd you leave early? Do you know? She kept saying like, they know I'm here. They're following us. And who is she referring to when she said they're following us or they know we're here? Um, the police. Was she acting the same way she was when you're in Colorado saying you're following us and things like that? Yes. <clears throat> so what happens after that conversation? Um, we end up leaving. Um, and I remember her saying like, you know, we don't have like the money to keep staying at all these hotels in different places. So we drove to Myrtle Beach. And do you remember when you got to Myrtle Beach? Um, a day or two after that. Did you turn the van in to the budget rental center in Myrtle Beach? Yes. Did you go there directly or did you go somewhere else first? Um, we went somewhere else first. And how long it took to turn the van? Um, I remember we got to Myrtle Beach. She had parked the van at a hotel near where we were going to stay at like a friend's house. Okay. Do you know why she did that? Or did you ask her why she did that? Um, no, I think she said like, she just didn't want the person that we were staying with, like for them to get like attention brought to their house. Did your mom ever mention to you the fact that that van may have had a GPS device on it? She was driving it. No. Do you know that? No. You know that now? Yes. How'd you unload the van in Myrtle Beach, or did you unload the van? I did not know. Who unloaded the van in Myrtle Beach? Um, I was told something of who unloaded the van. I don't know if you want to hear that. Well, who told you that? I guess it depends on that. Um, it is my best friend's mom. Okay, we can't get into that. Okay. We can get into things your mom tells you, but okay. not others, okay? Okay. Um. you stay in Myrtle Beach up until the point your mom was arrested? Yes. Tell the jury about your mom's arrest. I was scheduled to go in to meet with my recruiter that morning. Um, and she brought me there. She waited in the car that we had there. Um, and that's when I walked in. And like there was like police and everything talking to me and told me that she had been arrested. Did you actually see her get arrested? No, I did not. And did this happen on March 2nd of 2020? Yes. Did you give an interview with an FBI agent seeking help here? Yes. Recognize him? Yes. And did you talk about some of the things that we talked about here with regards to the Dollar Tree and the events surrounding Gannon's disappearance? We did, yes. Were you completely upfront with him at that time? Yes. When you were talking to him, did you still believe that your mom didn't have anything to do with this? Yes. And that was before Gannon's body was discovered, is that right? Yes. What about when Gannon's body was discovered? Um, that was a little bit after when I found out it was discovered in Florida. It was just weird because, in, like, to myself, I was like, we were in Florida. Um but I kept like wanting to think it was like a coincidence and that somebody like did follow us or there was a different story. You still believed your mom even after that? Yes. At what point did you not believe your mom anymore that she didn't have anything to do with Gannon's death? Um, I like started having questions, but I still like believed her for a while and it wasn't until this past like November, it was recently. What are your thoughts about your mom pleading not guilty by reason of insanity? I didn't know what it meant at first. Um, yeah. Did you learn what that meant in November? Um, yes. 
sort of talked about your life with your mom since the day you were born, as far back as you can remember, okay? Okay. Had you been with her 24-7? Yes, other than like when I was at school or work or... Would she ever disappear for weeks at a time and you not know where she's at? No. Had you always known where she was at up until we talked about the Life 360 app, but had you always known where your mom was at for a given time? Yes. <clears throat> had you ever gone to Australia with your mom? No. Have you ever gone to Saudi Arabia with your mom? No. Has your mom ever gone to Australia or Saudi Arabia without you? No. Would you know that if she did? Yes. Had you ever seen your mom change personalities into someone she isn't? No. What do you mean by that? Do you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Has she ever not remembered who you were? No. Have you ever seen her not remember who Al Stout is? No. Have you ever seen her not remember who Gannon was? No. Lena? No. Had she ever been treated for any mental illness in your lifetime? No. Would you know that if she was treated? Yes. Would you know if she ever went to a psychiatric hospital and was in an inpatient program and couldn't leave because of some kind of mental illness? Yes. Had that ever happened? No. Had she ever seen a therapist about mental illness that you know of? No. During the entire time, especially in January, January 27th of 2020, all the way up till you go to Myrtle Beach in this van, your mother have the capacity to know right from wrong? Yes. Did you see that with your own eyes? Yes. Did she know how to check into rooms? Yes. Did she know how to register for rooms? Yes. Did she obey the traffic laws? Yes. Did she do anything unusual on any, you know, during this entire trip? No. Have you seen people who are mentally ill? Yes. Do you know the difference in what I'm talking about? Someone who can't function in society versus the way your mom was acting? Yes. Did you see any evidence of that with your mother? No. Had you seen instances, especially in January and January 27th of 2020, where your mother had the capacity to form the intent to do things? What do you mean? She intended to go to the store. Yes. When you went to Walmart to buy clothes. Did you talk about that? And then did you, in fact, go to Walmart to buy clothes? Yes. Did you have an opportunity to see her to have the capacity to form judgment? use judgment and reflection and to make decisions. What do you mean? Was she able to decide things? Oh, yes. Was she able to rent this rental van on her own, take you and drive Texas all the way to Florida up to Myrtle Beach? Yes. Has your mom ever referred to herself as Jasmine? No. Do you have a cousin named Jasmine? No. Jazz? Her name's Jazlyn. Jazlyn. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I must have misunderstood something. Do you know who Jasmine is in the Disney movies? Yes. Aladdin? Yes. Your mother watched a lot of Disney movies? No. You never seen her act like Jasmine, the prince, princess in Aladdin? saying she's going to go to Saudi Arabia and things like that? No. Have you ever heard your mother refer to herself as Taylor? Yes. Tell me about that. Um, she didn't like her first name, so she wanted to change it. And I thought she changed her middle name to Taylor, and that's why she went by Taylor. Did she open social media accounts with the name Taylor because of what you just said? Yes. Do you know if she ever legally changed her name to Taylor? No. Uh, when she was referring to herself at Taylor, did she take on a different personality or is it your same old mom? The same. 
What about Victoria? Has she ever referred to herself as Victoria? No. Has she ever referred to herself as Harmony? No. Has she ever referred to herself as Christina? No. Has she ever referred to herself as Little Lucia? No. Has she ever referred to herself by the name of Maria Sanchez? No. You know a Maria Sanchez? No. Have you ever seen your mother speak with a Spanish accent? No. If she had, would you remember that? Yes. During these times when you're talking to your mother and she's angry about being set up by the police and being accused, did she ever change personalities and start talking in Spanish or in a Spanish accent? No. Carly, at one point last year, um, were you concerned that you might be charged with a crime based on the trip to Florida? Yes. What crime was it that you were aware of that you might be charged with? Um, that I would be like an accessory. That's really the first degree murder, right? Yes. And did you receive information through your attorney that we was willing to listen to your side of the story before we made a decision as to whether or not we were going to file charges. Yes. And did you fly out to Colorado and give us a statement, much like what you just said today, to this jury? Yes, I did. And why did you do that? Because it's the right thing to do. When you gave that statement, was there any guarantee as to whether or not we were going to file charges against you? No, there was not. What was the guarantees? What was told to you? There was no guarantees. You know that what you told us could not be used against you. Yes. Were you completely honest with us? Say us. I was the one asking you questions, right? Yes. Can we videotape that? Yes. Completely honest with us. Subject yes. Sustained. You can rephrase the question. You understood what you were coming in to talk to us about. Yes. You understood the consequences that you might be charged with a serious charge, right? Yes. You know that during the entirety of your state. Yes. Do you now know that you cannot be charged with that crime? Yes. Why? Because you guys believed me. I was being honest. Have you heard anything called the statute of limitations? Talk to you about that. No. Were you aware that there was kind of a deadline as to when we needed to make a decision about filing charges on you? No. <laughs> so uh, we don't need to go any further than that but it, at this time you know you cannot be charged with that right correct uh, but it wasn't part of the agreement that you signed back on august 17th of 2020 do you remember correct. and do you remember signing an agreement yes if i may approach your honor you may this is people who did it in green 24 Scissors, Make sure I don't disturb the document in here. Before you wade into that, would now be a good time for a break? I'm about to wrap up with this, Your Honor. So okay. That's fine. Back. Nope. It's all good. And for the record, I'm pulling out the contents of People's Exhibit 324. And I'm going to hand that to you. It looks like this is a two page document. Do you recognize that? Yes. And can you put those on that table? Yes. What is that? Um, this is what I signed after my interview. Is that the proper agreement that you signed back in August of 2020? prior to doing your interview with our office? Yes. And is that is that the same as it was back in August when you signed? Yes. Move to admit people's exhibit 324. Objection. Exhibit 324 will be admitted. Go ahead. Those are my questions, John. Thank you. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will take our uh, afternoon recess. If I can have everyone back in the jury room at, say, 3.30, we should be able to start on time at that point. Again, don't discuss the case among yourselves. Don't discuss the case with anyone else. Uh, with that, we will see you at 3.30. All rise for the jury, please. Thank you. you may all be seated. Court will recall 20 CR 1358, uh, People versus Letitia Stout. Record should reflect the jury has returned to the courtroom. Uh, cross examination, Mr. Tolini. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Hunt, I know this is emotional and difficult. Um, I've just got some questions to ask you. Okay. If you don't understand my questions, just let me know and I'll rephrase. Also, once I'm done, Mr. Young is going to have a chance to come up here and do what's called <laughs> redirect. So if there's something you don't think that you think you needed to ask for my question or that wasn't quite fair, I'm Mr. Okay. will have a chance to clear that up. Is that all right? Okay. Okay. So your mom and dad split up when you were about six? Yes. And after that point in time, up until your mom met Al, it was just you and your mom? Yes. And you guys were pretty close? Yes. And you guys spent a lot of time around each other? Yes. And do you remember sometimes during that time and all the times growing up that sometimes you would come on your mom and she would be in the closet rolled in a ball crying? No. You, we met before, right? You remember? Yes. We we're down in uh, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Yes. We went out to dinner. Yes. Do you remember telling me at that point in time that oftentimes you'd come and you'd see your mom lying on the floor crying? Question, Your Honor, this is incorrect. Just make sure she knew. Well, yeah, I've already instructed the jury that um, nothing that the attorneys say at any point in time is evidence. He can attempt to. Um, redirect her to a prior conversation if he's going to impeach her he's going to need a different um, approach than that but we'll leave it at that so re-ask your question mr Tolini. we were at we went out to dinner to talk about your mom growing up yes at that point you told me that sometimes you'd come across her in the closet crying the question that you asked me you were very specific saying rolled in a ball and everything so I answered no to that, but yes, I've came across my mom crying before. Do you remember coming across your mom crying and she was in the closet crying? Yes, she was in the closet like many a times just growing up, either texting on her phone or crying or many different reasonings. Did she have an explanation what she was crying about? In which specific time? Any times that you, she, you would see her crying. Sometimes was sometimes she crying for no apparent reason. No. Okay. When you were in Charleston, yes. Do you recall a time where your mom was texting you um, that something's going to happen to her and that you need to go live with Amy Bolton? Yes. And who is Amy Bolton? One of my mom's friends. And that Miss Bolton and you were both very concerned for your mom? Yes. That you actually had to crack her um, code on her phone to see yes. where she was? And she was in the hospital? Yes. She was in the hospital for mental issues? I was told she was in a hospital for, like, cancer and stuff. I don't know. I've been told so many things. Okay. Well, you had phone calls that both your mom, both you and Miss Bolton were worried your mom was going to commit suicide. And then you tracked her down into the hospital. Yes. There was also a time, um, you're about 15, you had a Jeep. Remember that Jeep? Yes. Your mom took the Jeep one time and wrecked it? Yes. Your mom told you she wrecked it because she thought she saw your dead father sitting behind beside her. No. No. I remember her wrecking the car. Um, I didn't get a clear, like, reason why it happened. I thought she swerved off the road for something, but not because of my dead dad. You don't recall her saying she thought she saw a chance? No. There were also times growing up that you lived significant stretches of time with Dee Dee? Yes. Why? One was when we lived in Charleston because I wanted to go to 
my old school as well, just because things weren't normal when we lived in Charleston. What do you mean things weren't normal? Like nobody was happy. It's just. Your mom wasn't happy when she was living in Charleston? Nobody was happy when we lived in Charleston. Okay. You would take lots of trips with your mom? Yes. Sometimes it felt so much like you're almost living out of suitcase? Yes. Growing up, do you remember your mom being paranoid about you getting kidnapped? Not specifically me being kidnapped. She was always just worried about me. I mean, so she would give you code words? Um, yes. What were the code words? Like, we I mean, would describe, describe. What were you, what do you mean by that? Um, I think it was like my middle name. How were you supposed to use it? Um, She would say it so that I would know that it was her talking to me. Okay. Um, did she say why this would be necessary? No, I just thought it was normal mom things, making sure your kid's safe. Okay. And you guys would also have safe places that you would meet up if necessary? No. Like the Chick-fil-A parking lot? No. You started using the name Taylor just prior to meeting Al? Yes. Do you remember complaining to her that it was confusing for you? You didn't know what to call her? Um, yes, because I didn't know if that was her. I was told it was her middle name, so. Okay. What about using the name Nicole? No. In those text messages between you and the phone that was your mother's phone, who's the name on your mother's phone? It says Nicole. This, when you and your mom turned off to, went off to Kansas City, were you given much warning? Did she say what was about or where you guys were going? Um, I just knew that she wasn't happy with her marriage, so we were leaving. She wanted to go do one of, like, flight attendant or something. Where were you guys going? I think we were going back to South Carolina. Okay. How much notice did she give you between when, hey, get in the car? Like, how much time did you have to pack? Was, there, was it a day? How much? Planning on this went on. Um, yeah, I did have to pack. I don't know if it was the day of or the day before. But there had had there been any talk before, but before she says start packing, we're leaving. Say, hey, what do you think about this? This is what I'm thinking about doing. Anything like that? Or does this appear very sudden? Yes. <clears throat> appear very sudden. No, she would just be like, um, I'm not happy. What do you think about moving here? Okay. Around the fall of 2019, do you remember your mom also becoming paranoid regarding an alleged hit and run accident? A what? A hit and run that you may have been in? Yes. And she thought people were constantly following her. I remember her saying that she was like accused of a hit or run and she talked to someone about it, like a police officer, and they said it wasn't her, it didn't end up being her. Okay, but do you remember her also thinking people were following her because of that? I don't remember. Like in a black sedan? I don't remember. Okay. Do you remember her quitting her teaching job because of mental health? When was this? In winter of 2019. Um, I remember her saying she's going to become a flight attendant and going to training instead of teaching. When you guys, I'm going to shift back and so, sorry, back when you guys would go to Alaska, you guys would go for a, for a couple weeks up to a month at a time? Yes. And your mom did not like Alaska? Yes. Do you remember 
a time that your mom came down and said that this was going to be the last dinner with you and her? Yes. And that it was too late. She'd already taken them. Yes. And that to you imply that she was contemplating suicide. Yes. And then the next day she acted like nothing happened. Yes. Was that unusual? That was the second time that she had done that. So Charleston and then then. Okay. Did she ever discuss either of those things with you? No. Like afterwards? No. Explain what was going on? No. I'll go now move up to the January 26, um, 2020. Okay. Um, that Sunday morning, you got called into Massage Envy pretty early, right? Yes, I remember it being like that morning, that day, yeah. Okay. So you don't have any personal knowledge if your mom tried to take uh, Gannon and Elena to church that day? No, I just know that I didn't go to church that day. And then you got home and your mom was telling you about the fire and everything like that? Yes. And you could smell the from that you could smell that there was burning. Yes. That occurred down in the basement. You testified early or this morning that when you came home and you were talking with your mom that your mom was scared. Yes. What was she scared of? Um she was she said that she was scared of like Gannon because he was acting weird. Okay. You then went and your mom, you went down in the the basement and say goodnight to Gannon. You both went down together. Yes. And do you remember your mom asking Gannon if he was all right? I don't remember. Do you remember well um, that letter that was given to you, that proper letter? You came in and then you did an interview. You remember doing the interview? Yes. You, remember you did it with Mr. Young. And Agent Cohen there? Yes. And you remember telling them that your mom asked if Gannon was all right and Gannon nodded his head? I don't remember. Um, I just remember like saying goodnight and like seeing him. I don't remember what I said. Yeah, but do you remember your mom asking if he was all right and he nods his head yes? Yes, if that's what I said. And then you left that morning for work around 8, because you had to be there by 8.30? Yes, sometime around that time. Did you see Gannon before you left? Not that I remember, no. Do you remember again back when your mom was arrested in South Carolina? Yes. And that would have been in March of 2020? Yes. So pretty closer in time to the events in question? Yes. you recall telling Agent Cohen that you had seen Gannon in the morning and they helped you with the dogs? No, I don't remember. Okay. You got home around 4.30? Uh, which day? On Monday, the 27th. Yes. And we saw you, you went in the house there. Yes. You actually, when you left that morning, how were you dressed? In my work clothes, we wore yeah, my work clothes. Okay. And so you have like, it's, it's like a kind of a maroon shirt from Massage Envy? No. What does the uniform look like from Massage Envy? It's black, I'm pretty sure. Okay. And they have special pants or just a shirt? No, there was no special pants. And you actually went downstairs and changed out of your uniform into a blue sweatshirt. I don't remember. If the dollar store video shows that you were no longer in your massage envy uniform, but in a blue sweatshirt, that would seem to indicate when you came home that you went downstairs to change, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Okay. So do you remember now going downstairs to change or no? No, I don't remember. 
at no point did your mom try to prevent you from going downstairs? No. And when you came home that Monday, the house still smelled like smoke. I don't remember if it did that Monday. I know that it did when I came home on Sunday. Okay. And you took Elena to the dollar store with you? Yes. How long were you guys gone? Um, this question was asked earlier. I don't remember what time we exactly said. Okay. Yeah. How far away was the dollar store? Um, down the street. Okay. And were you in there for a super long time or pretty? It was just, we went there and came home. Okay. And then when you came home, would, well, let me ask you this. Did you get home from the dollar store uh, before six? No, I don't remember what time I got home. Okay. Was, when you got home, was your mom already concerned because Gannon wasn't home yet? I just remember like time being approached and he wasn't there. Okay. And then uh, I kind of understood that initially you guys all go out to look for Gannon and then your mom comes home and stays home. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So initially your mom, you and Lane are all going to kind of some different friend's house to see if he's there. Yes. How long does that take? Um, they lived in the neighborhood, so we were just driving around the neighborhood. So it, I don't know the exact time, but it didn't take forever. Had you, do you know, had your mom called the police before you guys went and started looking for Gannon? No, I don't think she did. Okay, so she, after you guys go, look, can't find Gannon, that's when she then calls the police. I remember her calling Albert, um, so it was like after then, so. Okay, and it takes a long time for the police to come. Yes. And you're not, mom's not appearing, is she appearing unusual during this time? Um, no. I mean, she seemed worried like anyone would. Okay. And so you've known your mom your entire life? Yes. You guys have grown up very close? Yes. And at this point in time, while you're observing her, she seems legitimately worried for Gannon? Yes. How long did you guys stay up after the police came? Do you remember or after the sheriffs came? Um, no, I don't remember. Okay. And then that next Tuesday is when everybody Al comes back home. Right. Yes. Um, and other people start arriving. You have people from the military come over. Um, people are expressing concern. People are bringing food. Yes. Um, people are trying to set up searches for Gannon. Yes. It's a lot of traffic in and out of the house. Yes. Then at some point later that evening, um, some members of the sheriff's department come over. Yes. And they're there, one, they're there to get Lena. They're going to take her down to the police station. Yes. Um, and they also try to talk to you. Yes. And you tell them that you will not talk about Gannon. Yes. And you said you won't talk about Gannon because of all the stories on Facebook. Yes. And because they already have all the information they need. Yes. When you say you wouldn't talk to them because of all the stories on Facebook, what do you mean? Um, there are just people and their speculation and it was to my knowledge that my parents had already given them everything that they needed. So I didn't, I didn't know why I played a role in it. Okay. And you actually refused to talk to both. We refused to actually talk to about three different sheriff's deputies. Refused to talk to deputy Arndt or uh, detective Arndt. You refused to talk to uh, detective Perry and you refused to talk to detective Williams. Is that correct? I don't know their names. Okay, but you remember refusing to talk to three different ones? I remember refusing to talking to some. Okay.
you said that going on to the next day um, when you picked your mom up from the hospital that she was talking weird. What did you mean by that? What do you mean? You said that you picked her up from the hospital and she was just, stuff was just coming out of her mouth. What did you mean? Just saying stuff from what happened at the hospital, just saying like events that took place. It, 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 and maybe I misunderstood. I gathered that you found the way that she was talking when you picked her up from the hospital odd. Is that incorrect? Odd as in like, it was just like a bunch of like ramble at once. Like it was just going on and on. Like vomiting up words? Yes. Okay. You know what tangential thoughts are? What did you say tangent thoughts? Tangential, where people is, where a person jumps between subject matter to subject matter to subject matter with not necessarily logical connection. Was that how she was speaking? Um, no, because it just all related to Gannon being missing and people accusing her and so they all correlated in some way. Okay. But you found the manner in which he was presenting you that information was different than normal. Yes. Okay. When you leave, then in that van, when did she first say that you got were going to Florida? Um, different places were, you know, said. Um, I don't think we decided on Florida until after we got to Texas. Okay. And you guys are going to Texas because she was considering, she thought that might be a good place to live? Is yes. that what she told you? Did you say where in Texas may be a good place to live? Um, I think it was Dallas or Houston. Okay. And you drove that first day all the way from Colorado Springs to Amarillo? Yes. So that's about 10 and a half hours? Yes. Okay. You got into Amarillo. And then the next day you went and you went from Amarillo to Decatur, Texas, correct? Yes. That's only a four and a half hour long drive, isn't it? I don't know. Do you know what you did the rest of that day? Um, no. You talked about your mom making reservations at these different hotels? Yes. She was actually making those reservations with an app, wasn't she? I remember some of her reservations were through a call rhythm calling because she needed to get her IHG number. She didn't have an app on her phone for that? I don't remember if the phone that she had was a smartphone. Okay. And then you got up. And then when was it decided? So was it decided in Amarillo or in Decatur that Texas wasn't for you two? I don't know because I don't know where they're like in proximity to Houston and like Texas, like Houston and like Dallas. Well, Decatur would be just outside of Dallas. Okay. I mean, was it between Amarillo and Decatur that you guys were talking in the car and said, you know, not Texas, or was it that morning when you woke up in Decatur said, let's head off to Florida? When was the decision made to go? from Texas to Pensacola? I don't know which state it was in, but like, or which city it was in. I just remember I was being in Texas and deciding that. Can you remember, was it before the first hotel or the second hotel? I don't know. Okay. And then when you were driving from Decatur to Pensacola, did you guys drive around along the coast? I know that Destin is on the coast, so. Okay. And you drove through Louisiana? If that's on the route to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember driving through long stretches of the country that were marshy and swampy with nothing else around? 
I remember driving through like the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. The middle of nowhere, lots of marshes, lots of just nothing around. Yes. Remember that? Nothing okay. around, trees. And so you get to Pensacola and you check in the hotel. Um, and that night you guys actually slept in the same bed. Yes. Okay. And while you're sleeping in the same bed with your mother, you don't recall her ever leaving. No. And you're saying at no point in time. And so you guys are, let me back this up. You guys are in the van for that first day when you leave, when you go from Colorado Springs to Amarillo. How long were you in the van for? That day. Okay, so all day though. Yeah. Traveling 10, 11 hours. I don't remember how long it was. I just remember being in there for a long time. Okay, and you're telling this jury at no point did you smell anything suspicious? No, I did not. That next day from Amarillo to Decatur, still you don't smell anything suspicious? No. And from Decatur, and that was a 10, 11 hour drive from Decatur to Pensacola, correct? I don't remember how long it was. But you're in the van pretty much all time? Yeah. Did you and your mom? Yes. The dogs? Yes. And you don't smell anything suspicious? No. And you can, I mean, there's that gate there, but you can still look back in that gate and see stuff back behind you. Yeah, I mean, it's there's no lights or anything, so. I know, but sometimes you're driving during the day. Right, but you can't really see through it. It's just, there's no lights back there. Okay. It's not really shining through. And the, But you never look back, and you, you're saying you couldn't see anything when you looked back in that van? Didn't really have a reason to look back there. You didn't look back the whole time, all three days? You never looked back in that van? No. No? Okay. And you went from Pensacola to Orlando? Yes. And you were supposed to be in Orlando for five days, but you only stayed two? Yes, I remember we were supposed to be there for a while, and we didn't stay that long. Okay. And then decided that you needed to get, wanted to go back to South Carolina? Yes. Is that to be around family? Yes, I remember my mom saying that we don't have money to keep staying in hotels. Um, you know, our family was telling us just to go to Myrtle Beach, so that's where we went. And throughout this whole trip, the, this whole journey, I mean, it's part of the reason why you think you and your mom are going there is because you guys have been receiving some threats on Facebook and yes. social media. Yes. And so there appear to be some safety concerns why it might be best for you and your mom to leave at that point in time. Yes. And at this point in time, because knowing your mom your whole life, growing up with her, you couldn't believe that she would do anything to hurt Gann during this whole trip? No. Then you're, how long were you then in South Carolina before the FBI came to arrest your mom? Um... It was sometime between like February and March, like those weeks. And you're saying the FBI told you that Gannon had been found down in Florida when they arrested your mom? Um, no, that was when, I don't think they found his body until after she was arrested. Okay. And how did you find that out? Um, that's when the FBI came to my house multiple times. Okay. And at some point, E.D. and Amy Bolton hire you an attorney? Yes. Uh, that's Julian Rosiel? Yes. And so obviously from that point forward until you come in with Mr. Rosiel to talk to Mr. Young and Agent Cohen, you had not spoke to law enforcement? Not after, and like, 
they came when they found Gannon's body and talked to me at Miss Didi's house. Okay. Well, I mean, you hadn't talked about the events September 26th, 27th, and 28th. You hadn't talked to law enforcement about or to anybody about that ever until you sat down with Mr. Young and Agent Cohen. When I came out here? Yep. No. I met with you guys before I met with them. Yeah, but we didn't discuss those events. We discussed your mom growing up. Okay, yes. Okay. So you hadn't talked with anybody about those? Because do you remember that your attorney had put some conditions on us talking to you? Oh, yes. Okay. And there were things that your attorney was allowing us to ask you and other things that he was not allowing us to ask you? Yes. Okay. And so the first time you had really discussed your actions, your mom's actions over the 26th, 27th, and 28th was with Mr. Young and Agent Cohen almost three years later. Um, yes, I remember with my attorney, though, previously I had to write like a personal statement that he wrote for me to send to them. So your, your attorney wrote up what to say to them? Um, no, like a personal statement. Okay. And you would talk to your attorney before c coming out here. Yes. And basically what was explained to you is they're not sure if they're going to charge you or not. Yes. And they want to get your version of what you say happened. Yes. And then based upon that, they were going to make a determination whether or not they were going to charge you with accessory to, accessory to first degree murder. Yes. And at that point in time, you had already seen the probable cause affidavit. Yes. And so, and this, you followed this case in the media. Yeah, at some point in time, I had to stop looking at what the media said. And you remember at the beginning of that interview that you did with Mr. Young, him telling you, something to the effect of, I want to take some pressure off you. This isn't all on you. Your mother's pled not guilty by reason of insanity. So that's pretty much like an admission that she did it. I don't remember what they exactly said when I went in there. Um, I know that I had questions what it meant, but I had previously talked to, to Julian what it meant as well. Okay. And when you found that out that your mom had pled not guilty by reason of insanity, that angered you? Yes. Because you felt like you'd been deceived by her this entire time? Yes. And you had to put up with a lot of scorn? With a lot of what? A lot of scorn on social media? Yes. Anger and backlash? Yep. And so the decision on whether or not to charge you is going to be based upon what you, or at least not all of it, but to a degree on what you told Mr. Young and Agent Cohen. Can you rephrase what you said? You knew when you were going in to do that interview with them that whether or not you got charged was going to be based in part upon what you told them. Yes. You will, at times, manipulate the truth for your benefit. No. And, well, so when you were living in South Korea, so between when your mom got arrested and now, you've been living with some different people. Yes, I lived with one different person. Yeah, you live with Edie. Yes. Okay. You were also getting financial support from Aunt Brenda? Yes. And Brenda had bought you a car? Yes. And then she took that car away from you guys because you guys had a different disagreement? Yes. Um, and it was difficult for you to get back and forth to nursing school? Yes. And so in January of 2023, you set up a GoFundMe page? Yes. And on that GoFundMe page, you say, hi, my name is Harley. For those of you who don't know my story, I lost both my parents a few years ago when I was 17 years old. Yes. That statement seems to imply that both your parents died when you were 17. I don't think it does, no. 
Okay. Well, your dad had died a long time before that. Yes. Okay. And you didn't lose your mom. Your mom was just in prison, in jail in Colorado. I lost her. Okay. But you don't think that that's at all misleading to get people to give you money? No, nope. it was for my friends and family so they could have um, like a source to send it to me. We were likely to get more money from people if they thought your mom was dead as opposed to if your mom was in jail. Mm, no. You also put in there that you've been having to provide for yourself a place to stay, transportation, and the, the ecology and the necessities of everyday livelihood. Yes. But you said that your aunt up until just before that had provided you a car. She would, at the beginning of all this, cared and would help me with things. And then she would manipulate me and take everything away from me if I didn't do what she told me to do. Okay. But you indicate on your GoFundMe that nobody's helped you and that you're just out there all alone. No, I did not. During this time, not only was I struggling coping with this, but was also struggling with navigating my way through life and getting myself back on my feet. I had to provide my place, self a place to stay, transportation, college, and everyday's necessities. I never asked for help during this time and always tried to figure out everything on my own. It was a struggle filled with both highs and lows, but God has always provided a way. Yes. Okay. And you don't think that's different than what it actually was? I don't think that's what? You don't think that was a manipulation of the truth? No, it was not. How much money did you raise from that? Um, like $800 or something. No further questions. Redirect. Yeah, yeah thanks. And Mr. Young, would you move the microphone a little bit closer to the middle? Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Hunt, I want to start with how, where Mr. Tolini ended on this GoFundMe page. Okay. Tell the jury why you did this GoFundMe page. Um, when this all happened to me, I was left with literally nothing. <laughs> you would think that if my mom knew that she would do this, she would do something to, like, you know, prepare her daughter or set her daughter up to not have parents or financial help. Um, I had people in the beginning, they were very nice and they volunteered. I never asked people for anything like I had said in my GoFundMe paragraph. And it's like I was like thrown <laughs> out into the world. With nothing. There's some Kleenexes to your left there, Miss Hunt, if you'd like to use those. Are you doing okay? You Yeah, I'm fine. Let me ask you this. Um, you indicated on cross examination that it was August of was it August of twenty twenty two that your aunt Brenda cut you off? Um, I think it was September or August, yeah, somewhere around then. So was it after you came to Colorado to give this statement for a proffer and told us what you told this jury today? Yeah, it was after. Did she find out about it? Is that why she cut you off? I can rephrase. You can rephrase, right? Do you know why she cut you off? Um, there was just multiple like reasonings that didn't really make sense. She just didn't agree with, you know, um, like with the insurance of the car and things like that. Needless to say, it was after you gave your statement is when she took your car back and stopped providing you with funds. Yes. And you're in college, you're in nursing school, right? Yes. Were you working at the time? Yes. Now, when you made the post about losing both parents, what did you mean? 
I lost both my parents. It was like one day you wake up and your whole life changed. I lost stepdad and I lost my mom and my brother. I lost everybody. Were you trying to imply that your mom had died? No. Were you just stating the fact that she was arrested and you hadn't seen her since she's been arrested? Yes. Council asked you several questions about not smelling anything in the van. Do you recall that? Yes. Did your mom do anything to prevent you from smelling anything in the van as you were driving? Yes, um, she always kept the air on. I remember a time when I was cold and I tried to turn it off and she was like, no, it's hot in here. And um, I also like kept giving the dog like little like CBD treats to keep them calm. And you're driving in Jan into January, early February through Texas. Was it cold in Texas? Um, I don't remember. It wasn't like hot and sunny though. Mr. Tolini asked you on cross examination that you would have never dreamed that your mom would have done something bad to Gannon. Do you remember that question? Yes. What do you think about that now as you sit in this courtroom? Um, I'm still in shock. I defended her for years and I just feel like manipulated and lied to. <laughs> And when we started out your testimony this morning, you talked about learning about how your father actually died. Do you remember that? Yes. Is that what we're talking about? The manipulation that's been going on for years is finally coming to your realization? Yes. And do you remember when you were talking to us back in August, uh, the questions I was asking you about why we were considering filing charges on you? Um, yes. Do you remember you, me asking you, what would you explain to a jury about driving across country with a body in a suitcase in the back of that van? What would you tell the jury? Do you remember that question? Yes. Tell this jury whether or not you knew that Gannon's body was back in that van and why. I, the thought just never came across my mind. I just never thought my mom would do that. Um, I didn't see her to be the person to do that. So I never even like questioned it. Like it just never came up. And what would happen if you did question it? I, she would just say like, don't question me. Like, um, like saying it was back talking or I, the thought just never came across my mind. I just never thought my mom would do that. Um, I didn't see Mr. Tomini was asking you that. questions about any so relationships even, like, between the time like, your father and up. her separated and divorced. And what would happen if you By the did time question that she married I, Albert Stout? Do you remember say, that like, question? question me, like, um, yes. Um, did your mom date like, anybody or go out with anyone in between that time period? Yes. I you remember who she went out with and for how long? Um, there was Travis. Do you know Travis's last name? No. Do you know where you were living when she dated Travis? Myrtle Beach. And how long did they date? Um, it felt like a while, a year or two. Mr. Chilini asked you about a hospitalization at some point. Do you recall that question? Yes. You initially said that you thought that your mom was in the hospital because she had cancer. You remember yes. Cancer. Yes. Who told you that your mom had cancer? Um, I remember her saying she had ovarian cancer when we lived in Charleston. Who said that? My mom. And was that was she telling you that because why? Why would why didn't she tell you that? I don't know. Were you asking what the heck you're doing in the hospital? Yeah. And her answer was, I have ovarian cancer. Yeah, I remember. Did you ever bring up ovarian cancer again with you? No. Mr. Cellini asked you questions about uh, suicides and your mom talking about suicide. Do you recall those questions? Yes. Uh, he asked you on two different events, right? Yes. Do you remember one of those events being in Alaska? Yes. 
tell the jury about that. How did that come out? What was said? What was the circumstances surround what was said? Yeah, so I remember I was in my room um, and she was like, come eat, that's your last dinner with me. And I was like, what do you mean? And then um, she was like, it's already too late, like I took them. And then I was just like, what? And I remember crying and I was like, what do you mean? And then um, we went and had dinner and then it was never talked about again. And was this at a time when she was telling you that she didn't want to be in Alaska? She had nothing to do with Alaska, wanted to move from Alaska? Yes. What do you think about what she said to you now? What do you mean? Was that a form of manipulation, as you indicated earlier? Yes. Had you ever seen her try to hurt herself? No. And the other time she talked about suicide, was this related to the hospitalization that she said she was in for ovarian cancer? Um, yes. Did you consider that to be a form of manipulation? Yes. Mr. Tallini asked you questions about the cell phone and the, the cell phone uh, text messages that are entered in People's Exhibit 205. Do you remember reading those? And it says for her phone, it says maybe Nicole. Yes. For yours, it says daughter. Do you remember that? Yes. Do you know why that says maybe Nicole? No, I do not. Do you know whether or not your mom actually programmed her name into the phone? No, I do not. Okay. Are you familiar with iPhones and what comes up if you don't? program it with your name in there and things? Do you mean like when you have to set the iPhone up? Yeah. Oh, yes. So what happens if you never set the iPhone up with your name in there? You can't use it. Well, would your name come up? Yes. Or would it be something maybe? Would it be maybe somebody? Objection time. Sustained. Okay. I'm not sure that this is the right witness for that. Do you know why that her phone said maybe Nicole in text messages? No. Sustained. You talked about um, your mom quitting jobs on several occasions, especially the teaching jobs. Do you remember that testimony on Cross? Yes. Um, did she ever tell you why she was quitting these teaching jobs? Yes. What did she tell you? Um, I was told that she wanted to work, and then when she would work, Albert would be mad at her that she wasn't watching the kids, and then when she would watch the kids and not be working he would be mad at her for not working did she ever mention to you that she was being sexually harassed at school and she didn't want to work there anymore things like that um i heard that when i was younger who did you hear that from um i don't know i was in like middle or elementary school did you hear it from your mom i don't remember is that a common theme with your mom when she doesn't want to be somewhere? Something happens that is causing her to quit her job and move somewhere else? Um, it happened in Alaska. Mr. Tamini asked you about January 26, 2020 in the morning and whether or not anyone went to church. Do you remember that question? Yes. Uh, did you not, in fact, go to work in the afternoon around 2 o'clock in the afternoon that day? Sorry, I'm like forgetting times. There's been so many times. Um, yes. Let me ask you this. Uh, would your mom drive a vehicle to church? Yes. And would it be either Albert's truck or her Tiguan that she drove to church? Um, yes. Would that be on one of the ring videos in the neighborhood? If they actually went to church that day, you'd see the vehicles leaving and going to church? Yes. Do you remember changing your clothes on January 27th, 2020, when you got off of work and then went to the Dollar Tree with Lena? No, I don't remember. If you went down to the basement and you went, would you go into Gannon's room for any reason? No. Go into the storage room for any reason? No. Went to the basement, would you just go to your room, change, and then go back up? Correct, yes. Did you ever go into Gannon's room on January 27th, 2020? No.
Did you ever go into the storage room on that day? No, remember. If you went down in the basement and you went, would you go in again? Mr. Tallini was asking you questions about no. the Taco Bell and after the hospital. Remember, he was asking about the, the, the voice that your mother was telling you these things about rambling and words to that effect. You remember that? Yes. Did she was she telling you why she left the hospital? Yeah, she was. I remember something being mentioned about the hospital workers and like the story of what happened. Was she explaining that she was being treated unfairly and she actually ran away from the hospital? She, yeah, I remember her saying she was treated unfairly. Is that why you had to go pick her up at a Taco Bell instead of the hospital? Yes. Did she tell you that? Which part? Why? Why you had to pick her up at the Taco Bell? Um, I don't remember. Your mom is quite the talker. When she starts talking, she goes nonstop, right? Yes. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Is, was that unusual to you? Have you seen her on numerous occasions basically talk nonstop? Yes. Did you ever, whether it's January 27th or January 28th or January 29th, clean up any blood at 6627 Mandon Drive? No, I did not. If you had, would you have been telling this jury that? Yes. Did you ever see any blood on Gannon's wall in his bedroom? No, I did not. Did you see any blood in the storage room on the floor? No, I did not. Did you see any blood in the basement area at all? No, I did not. Could you smell any cleaning down in the basement? Um, our house always smelled clean. Why is that? Um, my mom was like a neat freak, so she always wanted everything clean. If you would have known Gannon's body was in the back of that van and you were talking to Agent Cohen back here, would you have told him that? Yes. You would have known that he was in that van when the FBI came out to South Carolina to talk to you about Gannon's body being found on March 17, 2020. Would you have told him that? Yes. Do you know now that Gannon's body was in that van as you drove across the country? Yes. Was your mom pretty athletic? Yes. Was she capable of lifting heavy objects? Yes. Overruled. Do you know how much Gannon weighed? He was little. Um... So he didn't, he didn't weigh a lot. Was your mom capable of carrying his body in a suitcase, picking it up and throwing over a bridge rail in Pensacola, Florida? Yes. Is that easy for you to say? No. You still love your mother? I'll strike that, Your Honor. I have no further questions. Do any of the jurors have any questions for me, son? Looks like we have a couple. Mr. Young, if you would retrieve those in council approach, please. Um, Ms. Hunt, did you see a large green suitcase loaded into the second van? No. The night when your mom asked, sorry, Jess, the, the night when your mom asked you to go down with her to say good night to Gannon, do you have a specific recollection of seeing any part of his body, like his hands, face, or any part of his actual skin? I remember seeing his head. <clears throat> the morning of the first day in Pensacola, Florida, when you left the hotel, do you recall if the van was in a different parking spot than where you had parked it when you checked in? Um, 
I don't remember. So let, let me rephrase that a little bit. So when you got there, the van's parked and you check in. You come out the next morning. Is it in the same spot or in a different spot? I don't remember where we parked. I just know we like would always park towards the back of the hotel. Okay. During your time living in Colorado Springs home with the other kids, uh, Gannon and Lena, did it appear to you that Gannon was treated more strict or more unfair than anyone else by the defendant, your mom? No. All right. I will allow reasonable follow-up as to those questions only. Prosecution? Can we request to publish People's Exhibit 48 that's already in the evidence? Ms. Hunt, if you can look at the TV screen, uh, this is People's Exhibit 48. Do you recognize the suitcase that we see in that exhibit? Yes. How do you recognize that suitcase? I remember it from like moving from like Alaska or anytime we would move. Had you ever seen that during the time periods that we've been talking about? January 27th, January 28th, January 29th, all the way up to February 4th? No. Those are my questions. Defense. Defense. All right. All right. Thank you, Ms. Hunt. You may step down. Watch your step. It's okay. Go ahead. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to end a little bit early today. Um, so if I can have everyone back in the jury room a little bit before nine o'clock in the morning, we should be able to and do not discuss the case among yourselves. Do not discuss the case with anyone else. Uh, do not do your own independent research about any aspect of the case. And we will see you all at 9 o'clock in the morning. All rise for the jury, please.